I had known about Shirdi Sai Baba many years ago. Many years ago, but uh, just another saint, or I didn't, I didn't give much, much attention to it. Later on, in 2004, uh, I was uh, back from Iraq, and uh, one gentleman called me and said uh, he would like to interview me on the subject of uh, um, spirituality management. So that time I was not teaching anything. So I went for the uh, program and this was shot in a beach. We were walking and he will ask the question, I will talk and we walk and talk. And this started from the, the first shooting happened in front of a Sai Saibhava Mandir. So I did not know anything about him at that time. So I went uh, into the mandir. Normally, whenever I go to any temple, I prostrate, I surrender to any saint. I respect, I give respect. So just like that, I gave respect to the uh, Baba Murti statue, idol, and uh, I prostrated at his feet. In 14 days, 14 days actually, exactly in two weeks, I'm in Shirdi. So this I consider as a miracle. And uh, soon after this uh, shooting, I went to Bombay and I, I went to a bookstore. Then I said, I would like to have a book of Baba, Shirdi Sai Baba, Sai Satchelda. It was, it was actually, uh, I did not know at that time, why did I ask for, for a book of Baba? I cannot find a reason. There was no plan like that. And I started reading. And as I said, in two weeks time, I reached Shirdi. And the moment I stepped into the temple, it was as if I had reached home. It was such a great feeling. And uh, this continued. This was, uh, this was a very uh, unique experience and it continued. And the connectivity increased uh, quite a lot. Well, uh, after well, one miracle, like, then later on I moved into Dubai. I was employed in Dubai at that time. Uh, I had a meeting in Bombay, so I thought probably what I will do, I will uh, go to Shirdi first, then I will go to go for the meeting. So I arranged the vehicle accordingly, from the airport straight to Shirdi and then come back to Bombay. While in the airport, I called a saint friend of mine. He, 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 can, he has the power to see. So I, he asked me, where are you going? So I said, I'm going to... Uh, Shirdi. Then he said, a big miracle is waiting you, waiting for you. I said, sure. So what happens is when somebody tells you there is a big miracle going to happen, then your mind will be tuned for the miracle. You know? The other things will be out of focus. Uh, that's not a good idea, but that is how the human mind works. So I, I reached Bombay, I went to Shirdi, I was uh, in, at Shirdi, so that I, I, I took take a cab, uh, I rented a cab and I told the cab driver I need some good materials to put in the uh, dhuni, dhuni, the fire that Baba had lit. So that time uh, when I went they were selling those small packets of something to be put, I didn't want that, I, I wanted, I respected the fire and uh, especially it's lit by Baba. So I told the driver, please get me something, something more substantial. I paid him the money and then uh, he brought some stuff and, and I put it in the, the, partially I put it and partially I asked him to do it. And then uh, it's one way to enter the Dwarka Mai where Baba used to sit. So I entered Dwarka Mai and the same way you cannot exit. The police will not, the watchman, the security will not allow you to come back on the same way. It means you cannot go back. You have to go through one, ent you enter through one place and exit through the other. So I, I put the uh, materials in the dhuni and I was just about coming out. Suddenly an old man came with a, with a child and held my hand and said, uh, he, he held me, he stopped me. So that time I did not think, how can he enter through this way? Because there is only exit. 
he walked through the exit and I, I doubt whether anybody else saw him at that time. He said, Idharao, come here. And then, and it was all command, come here. And Saridhar Rekho, put your head here. So there was a, there is a pole which Baba used to lean on when he used to live there. He left his body in 1918, 1918. So I, I spontaneously obeyed. I just put my head on the pillar. I did not know, I mean actually I did not know him, I did not think, there was no mind at that time. It was blank. But I still feel the, the, the power of his holding, I mean it was a very firm grip on my hand. And uh, I put my head, then he said, Abhi jao, now you go. And then I left, I didn't think again, I didn't think anything. I just left. So, and you can't stand there because people will ask you to move. And the mo uh, then I came out and I uh, we were preparing to leave back, back for Bombay. We were preparing to come back. Uh, at that time, I called my friend up, the saint. I said, you, t so you said there will be a miracle. I was expecting something to fall or some kind of a, a spectacle where, you know, you are all, nothing happened. So I called my friend and I said, uh, you said there will be a miracle, where was the miracle? Then he said, Baba came and met you, wasn't that good enough? That's when I, oh my God, that was Baba. But, but you know, in such circumstances you would fail to see and he, he never comes in the picture that we have in mind. Usually he comes in his own way. He comes as a bird, he comes as a beggar, he comes in any form. Only if he, he wishes that we can understand that. So that was my that was a turning point of my existence. Baba asked me to put my head on the pillar he used to lean on. That was almost the highest surrender I could possibly do at that time. Because in 2004 I was not teaching anything. People did not know me, recognize me as in spiritual path. But then onwards, the connectivity increased quite a lot. Every, uh, whenever possible, I used to go to Shirdi. And whenever I go to Shirdi, uh, it was, it was, something will happen. But then again, I understood the mind provokes this, uh, this um, experience. Means, oh, you're going to Shirdi, something should happen now. That's not a good idea, you know, because mind likes repetition. If you are in absolute surrender, everything that has to happen, it should happen in your consciousness, in your inside, not externally. Externally, you can watch the magic shows forever, but there can be no change inside. But if the proximity, if, if you are looking for proximity of a guru, of the stature of Baba, then things should happen inside, which happened, which definitely happened. Because Baba is more active today than probably he was in his body at that time because we a great master sitting in a body always have limitations he has to work within the boundaries of the body and he has to uh, and there is a personality so people get affected with the personality because people create mental images so I also probably started creating a mental image if Baba is coming he should come in this form the form which we see in the picture. That's not true. It cannot be. Well, later on, many, many uh, things happened. One thing happened was, uh, uh, there's a great artist uh, called Sudhagar Kaskiwala. He used to work with uh, uh, the legend Raj Kapoor in his films. He used to be the um, site engineer, the what do you call the uh, art engineer or uh, designer, set designer kind of role in his films and he had uh, a, a kind of paralytic attack even with that he made a sketch of Baba and his father and grandfather used to live with uh, Baba so their connection with Baba is very deep. Uh, Sudhagar Kaskiwala is probably you know, in his 70s. Uh, one day he came to our house 
uh, in Kerala. And uh, I gifted him two pictures of Baba. Five minutes later, uh, his son calls from Bangalore. He said, Papa, if you're coming this way, I would like to have two pictures of Baba. So he said, I already have it. So like this, there are many, many incidents in life, which uh, it'll take a long time to explain. But when I visited Kaskiwala, he uh, showed me the sketch. He had, in his room here, he had kept the sketch which he made of Baba, which he had taken to Shirdi at that time, many years ago. At that time, there were people who lived with Baba uh, there. And they said that this is a very, very uh, good resemblance of Baba. How did you do it? Because uh, you never saw him. But uh, the sketch is absolutely the way he looked. So, it came to him. And they did pujas and things. So, I wanted a copy of it. So, I, I just thought, okay. Uh, I will ask him. So I asked him, if you don't mind, I would like to have a copy of it. It's an amazing picture. So he didn't tell me anything. So I thought probably he doesn't want to part with it. Uh, but I'm not talking about the original, many copies. And then um, finally, while I was leaving, he said, just wait a minute. And he took the original picture and gave it to me. That was too overwhelming for me. Because this is such a priceless work and from the heart and it's it's actually a miracle as well because he has not seen Baba in real life but he drew exact resemblance of Baba which the which his contemporaries confirmed so I told uh, no I don't need this I, it, it, I mean I, I just need a copy he said no you deserve this you take it something tells me that this should be with you that picture is still there in my house in Kerala but uh, then I said, uh, I have to pay because I can't accept anything free. It's not right, you know, because the, the, any, any material, not only this. So he said, this is priceless. You can't quote any money for this. Then he said, whatever you like, you keep it in the feet of. There was another picture of his guru, uh, guru of uh, art, the designs. His picture he said, whatever you like, you put it. So I put some money and then I left. So like this. There are many. And then another uh, incident happened was uh, uh, we have been looking at uh, making a Shirdi Sai Baba Mandir temple. Uh, I, my, our original plan, my original plan was that we have some land uh, in uh, Kerala, Amukher village land. And we thought we'll make a Shirdi Baba Mandir there. But then there was no money, there was no finances, so many issues. So now we are looking at making the same mandir in our ashram in uh, uh, Maharashtra. Again, uh, finance is a bit of a problem, so it slowed down. So I told this to one of the people, one of, the, one of our friends, he's no more actually. He visits Shirdi every very often. I think he has visited Shirdi almost 4,000 times in his life. So he visits there more of, very often. and. Um, uh, while he was coming, I told him, please uh, surrender at Baba's feet our thought that we need to have a temple of Baba. So he said he will do that. And he went, he said, Mohanji wants to uh, surrender this thought at your feet. So if it is your will, let it happen. So while he was coming out, he was getting into the car. One man came and uh, called him and he said, this is for you. So you, you are planning to make a Shirdi Sai Baba temple. This is for that. And then he opened it. It was Pada's, the feet of Baba on marble. You know, so and then he looked, there was nobody. So Baba himself delivered his approval in the form of, that's a very heavy uh, thing. And um, once uh, this was kept in our puja room, because the temple has, had, didn't happen till now. It will happen for sure. If it is Baba's will, it will happen. So this was kept in the, in our puja room. And uh, we had, we, uh, there was a business uh, to be wound up which we had thought of starting and it did not work well. So we decided to close the shop. So there were a few shares distributed at that time 
to many people. So the lawyer said, the chartered accountant told that we need to get back all the shares, submit it to the government and nullify everything and cancel the whole business. But I was not even sure where, where are the shares, you know. To trace the people who had the shares itself is very difficult. So we tried to communicate with a few people, but we didn't get it. And finally, the last day of the submission was near and I almost, uh, I, I told uh, the chartered accountant, I, I think it's impossible to get all the shares. So that day morning, when my father went and opened the temp small temple inside our house, this uh, the Baba's feet is there. On top of the feet, there is a envelope. And when we opened the envelope, there's a full bunch of shares, whatever we had issued at that time. Everything, one, two, whatever number intact. Nobody can say how it came there because it is impossible. It lies with many people. Uh, Shirdi Sai Baba is one of the uh, Nath Gurus, Nath tradition. This tradition was formulated by Lord Dattatreya based on the instruction of Lord Krishna. It was uh, Lord Krishna who, who suggested that the mission that he came for, that is the preservation of dharma on earth, should continue even after he, he leaves the body. So he uh, asked the Nava Narayanas, the Nayan Narayanas of the cosmos, that, are, that these are extension of himself actually, of Mahavishnu. Lord Krishna was the avatar of Mahavishnu. To come to earth, and formulate the Navanath tradition. And later on, Lord Tathatreya codified it. And also, in the if you read the um, um, Satcharita of uh, uh, Sri Pada Sri Vallabha, in which he say he uh, Sri Pada is asking Hanumanji to come and take birth as Shirdi Sai Baba. So. He, it's implied that uh, Hanumanji's rebirth, or Hanumanji never leaves actually, he's, he's uh, ever existent, he's always, he's Chiranjeevi, he's always there. So, uh, Siddhi Sai Baba is, uh, 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 is, is an Amsha or a part of Hanumanji and he's a Nath Guru. In the Nath tradition, uh, Adi Nath, the first Nath is Lord Shiva. And from there, the, there are various Naths, Machid Nath, Gorak Nath. There are numerous Nath Gurus who have walked the earth and who are still walking the earth because the, the tradition flows forever. And um, in the Nath tradition, the main distinct feature is there are no much teachings. There is nothing much to learn. There are no courses. There are no procedures. Everything happens in the presence of Guru. You know, proximity to the Guru is the most important thing. So being with the Guru, being in his energy field, you get cleansed and you get liberated. So if you look at Shirdi Baba, he said Shraddha and Saburi, Shraddha devotion and Saburi patience. These are the two coins he was asking everyone. So uh, Shraddha and Saburi are, I would say, like uh, two pillars of the whole constitution or the path or two walking sticks which will help you to be a Nath uh, seeker, a seeker in the Nath tradition or a Nath uh, uh, Sampradaya uh, uh, being. So, in, uh, I, would, I would say that uh, the, the path is simple but it is also difficult because even if there is a speck of ego, there is a speck of doership, it doesn't help. Total surrender to the Guru, to the Master. And uh, as Muktananda said, I never ask my Master why. This is very important in this tradition. Uh, whatever the, uh, the guidance of the Master is, it's obeyed. And usually they, they wouldn't even guide you. They wouldn't even tell you anything. But all, everything is delivered. That is why Baba Shirdi Baba himself said, uh, 
that uh, I, uh, my guru was powerful and but he never taught me anything but he delivered everything there was nothing to teach teaching is an activity delivery happens or del the, the, uh, the whole thing is delivered in beingness so there is nothing to say nothing to talk there is everything to be so this is the the way it goes but the path is powerful tradition is powerful now to tell the stories of baba there are numerous stories many many stories at one uh, mostly even now i give sai satchar that to people and all the people who received uh, it they have told some experience their life has changed for the better so this is the power of baba he operates 24/7 much beyond like look at uh, shirdi today it's so crowded so many people are coming from so many parts of the world they come not because because of because um, uh, of uh, uh, fancy they come because they have experience they, they always come most of the people come because they have experience and you and you can see the faith brimming in their eyes you know when you go there baba was beyond frames as any nath guru baba was beyond frames at his time he was even taken to the court many people considered him as mad some people came and they were disillusioned with his mannerisms and left so the same situation gets repeated all over the time the same people who did not understand jesus who did not understand the gurus like even a great 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 master like um, uh nyaneshwar nyaneshwar left his body at the age of 22 he completed all he had to do within the age of 22 and he was tortured by the then generation not only him his brothers and sisters sister one sister the brothers and sister were also not even they were not even delivered uh, i mean they were not given food or you know they they were too young when their parents died it was the society that, that pushed them to commit suicide so this kind of a society is existing in all times a society who cannot understand subtlety they look at things from their scientific or uh, material angle and start deciding this is it but the truth is something else so same thing was happening with shri sai baba also but again as he said patience patience has worked but beyond his time you know he was patient always he was uh, not at all in a hurry but the actual today if you look his popularity is much more today but he left his body in 1980 this is the truth of existence mostly the people or the gurus who are contemporary are not appreciated because there is a personality you have to deal with the personality of the guru this is difficult because personality is if the personality does not get correlated with your mental image of the of a guru or how a guru should be then there is a conflict so i expected the guru to behave in this way oh baba smokes cigarettes or baba smokes chillum baba used to uh, when somebody comes oh you have a new brand of cigarette let me try one you know so people were thinking hey, this is a this is supposed to be a very enlightened master how can he be behave so uh, in an ordinary way but that is the potential of him that means when you are in absolute beingness you are everything and you are nothing when you are operating in absolute time when you are not pushed to think pushed to talk pushed to act you are free you can do whatever you like because your your existence is liberated you are not bound by one thing one person or one situation you know even even a habit so when you operate in that kind of a level you are everything and you are free that people don't understand they only look at the habits mannerisms the way he spoke the way he acted sometimes he used to shout and scream so people think an enlightened master or a great saint how can he behave like this you know 
So these are the concepts which we have to demolish first of all to see the truth. If we do not demolish the concepts, the truth always is, uh, it, it slips past. You won't catch it. So uh, there, are, there are many, many things we can talk about Baba, but uh, the main thing is that, do you have a mental image of Baba? Or do you have a picture? This is how it should be, or he should be. Then it's difficult for you to actually see him. Otherwise, if you do not have a mental image and you are just connecting to the consciousness that Baba operated in, or Baba operates even now, it stays. It's real. You know, this is real. And you will actually uh, feel the connection, experience the connection, and be one with him. Otherwise, we are only talking about a few miracles. They are just a slight, mild expressions of the huge consciousness. So if you look at Baba as the omnipresent, powerful and uh, available entity, this is true. But how, how are you approaching him? Surrender to him as, as he is supreme, without expectation, without any barrier. Not asking for anything, everything will be delivered. People go to Shirdi and say, please get my child a job or the child get a marriage, proper marriage. Like this, there are very mundane, small things people are asking. But Baba can take you to the highest point. Baba can merge you with Shiva or to his own consciousness, which is the same as Shiva's consciousness. This people don't understand. You know, So it's important to, to be with the truth, feel with the truth. And so that you understand the whole thing. Uh, there was Radha Krishna Mai living in, in, the, in the, with the Baba, that, living him inside. She was living outside, but she used to come and clean. She became pregnant, and people blamed Baba for that. You know, even that level, people would have tortured Baba when he was existing, in every level possible. But today, everybody knows that Baba was beyond all things. What if he smoked? What if he, he, he did so many things which uh, people never approve? We don't have, we don't need approval of anybody. What is right is done. What is rightfully done should be done. What is to be done should be done. Purpose based existence. Purpose, like Jesus. Jesus' whole existence was purpose based. You know, he never had a deviation. You know, that doesn't mean that he didn't take bath or he sleep or he eat food. This is all part of the existence. If you have a body, you have everything related to the body, all the plus and minuses of the body. Body grows old, it decays, it uh, dies. You see? So we must understand the entity in absoluteness. This is important to know. Otherwise, what happens is, because of our limitation, because of our limited vision, we miss the truth. This is why many people do not attain the highest or the, the highest uh, point in the path of spirituality because they are caught in between in their own mind. They are caught in between and they believe that uh, they have reached the point or they are disillusioned. Disillusion might happen. And then what happens is fall happens. It takes further time to climb up. So what else shall I talk about Baba? Thank <laughs> you.